This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this lecture is on chapter 9, and as you can see, it's short term decision making. And as we go through, you'll see there are actually three different, three separate techniques I'm going to go through. Um, and so I'll split this into three lectures, each technique separately. Um, the reason they're all in the same chapter is there is a um, similar thought processes involved, but they are separate techniques. Uh, on the first and half of the second page, you'll see um, terminology, some of which you should already be more than happy with, variable cost, fixed cost, contribution, we've spoken about them earlier. Uh, others you may or may not have heard of. Uh, rather than just talk through blindly, as we go through the three separate techniques, I'll explain within the technique where relevant um, what the words mean. Um, and so I want to go straight to the first technique, or the first type of problem, which is shutdown problems. Oops, I should not bother trying to write it, but shutdown problems. And if you look at example one on the second page, let's have a quick read and then uh, we'll have a go and sort it out. I think, I hope you'll find it relatively easy, but obviously make sure. A uh, company manufactures three products, pawns, rooks and bishops. The present net annual income from these is as follows. Well, I give, we've got a total column there. The sales, variable costs, contribution in total is 60,000. Fixed costs of 55, so the overall profit is 5,000. But they've also analysed it between the three products. And you can see that Pawns is making 3,000 profit, Rooks is making a loss of 3,000, Bishops a profit of 5,000. The company is considering whether or not to cease to stop selling Rooks. It's felt that selling prices cannot be raised or lowered without adversely affecting the net income. So you can see um, why they're considering. I mean, Rooks appears to be loss making. Obviously, they need to um, think about whether to stop. And maybe, you see, had we been able to put prices up, we could have made it profitable, but apparently we can't. 5,000 of the fixed costs of Rooks are direct fixed costs, which could be saved if production ceased. All of the fixed costs would remain the same. And what Part A requires, if you look at the bottom, consider whether the company should cease production and sale of rooks under each of the scenarios. Now the important thing here before I do, if you like, do the workings, is the fixed costs. The total fixed costs for the business are 55,000. And okay, to do that analysis, they have split them, allocated them between pawns, rooks and bishops, but remember, if it wasn't for one sentence of this question, total fixed costs by definition stay fixed, whatever we end up producing. And so here, if we're paying 55,000 in total, then whatever happens, we'll pay 55,000, whatever we produce, whether it's more, whether it's less. The one thing that makes this one a bit different is 5,000 of the fixed costs would actually be saved if we stopped Rooks. And therefore, the remaining 50,000 will be the same whatever happened. Anyway, let's make the decision. Now, there are two ways, uh, not two ways, several ways, in fact, that you could go about making the decision. Uh, I'll mention another way afterwards, but what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to look at the effect of stopping rooks. To what extent might it increase our existing profit? To what extent might it reduce it? What's going to happen if we stop rooks? Uh, oh, clearly, stopping rooks, we lose that sales revenue of 40, but we save the variable cost of 25 because we're not producing. And so we would lose the contribution. Uh, which is 15,000. So our existing, our current total profit would go down by 15. On the other hand, of course, stopping rooks will save the fixed overheads. 
And how much will we save? Well, without repeating what I said a few minutes ago, 5,000 of them will be saved if we stop rooks. So for that alone, if we save fixed overheads, that would push our total profit up by five. So what's the overall effect on the company's profit? The change in the current profit Losing that contribution will reduce our current profit by 15. Saving fixed overheads will increase our current profit by five. So overall, the current profit would fall by 10,000. And therefore, of course, uh, would it be worth stopping rooks? Well, no, do not stop rooks. So I do hope that makes sense. And um, I said at the beginning, there's more than one way of getting the same answer. I mean, it doesn't matter at all in the exam. And so what you might find more obvious, I'm not to argue whether it's faster or slower, but what you could do is rewrite the total column in the question. You know, total sales will just be pawns and uh, bishops. Total variable costs will just be pawns and bishops. Fixed costs, remember, will be 50,000, but only four by five. And you come to exactly the same conclusion. Appreciate this is the change in the current profit. Currently, it's plus 5,000. If we do stop rooks, drops by 10, so it'll be minus 5,000. Uh, I can use this to deal with one bit of the terminology I was referring to on the previous page. Those fixed costs are the saving that we make by stopping rooks, they are what we call avoidable fixed costs. You know, as I said earlier, usually total fixed costs are the same whatever happens, we can't avoid them. For some reason here though, 5,000 of them are avoidable, they specific to, um, to rooks. Anyway, that's part A. Let's look at part B. Uh, same question, but this time it says, suppose that we, it was possible to use the resources released by stopping rooks to produce a new item, crowners. Uh, they'd sell for 50,000 and incur variable costs of 30. And they'd have extra direct fixed costs themselves of six. Again, should we stop rooks or shouldn't we? If, uh, if it'll mean our current profit increases if we stop them, then stop them. But if it were to mean our current profit would fall, then like before, we wouldn't stop them. So let's check. And I'll take the same approach as before. We already know the effect on its own of stopping rooks. Uh, we lose the contribution. Uh, which was what? Uh, 15,000. Uh, we save fixed costs of 5,000. So that's as before. But what are we doing this time? We're going to stop rooks, but we're also going to do crowners. And so what effect on our profit will there be if we do crowners? Well, we'll get extra contribution, and that will push the profit up. Contribution, the sales less the variable costs. So that'll give us extra profit from where we currently are. But there will also be extra fixed costs. The extra costs from doing uh, crown is an extra 6,000, and on its own, obviously, an extra 6,000 cost of in less profit. So this time, what's the overall effect on our current profit?
By how much will the current profit go up or go down? It will go down by 15, up by 5, up by 20, down by 6. So the overall effect, uh, 25, 10, it goes up by 4,000. So stopping rooks doing crowners and increase the current profit by 4,000. It's currently 5. If you want to do a new profit statement, you'll find it goes up to 9. But the fact that it's going up means we should this time stop rooks. So, I hope we're clear there. I mean, that was a, a pretty short one. And, but in fact, this is always an area that's more likely as an MCQ and as a, a multiple choice question. Even though there's not a lot involved there, uh, that's enough for a multiple choice question, obviously, but it takes a, a while to read it and um, interpret it, even though the arithmetic itself is quick. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. That's the end of the first of the three lectures. We'll go through the second uh, of the short-term decision-making uh, topics in the next lecture.